All right, so if you're in your 20s or early 30s looking to buy a home in Canada and your parents ever told you, well, back in the 90s, I had to pay... Okay, no one talks like that. If your parents ever told you back in the 90s, they had to pay 15% interest on their mortgage, way more than the shocking rates of 5, 6, 7% today, that's 100% true. But what's not true is that home ownership was harder back then. According to RBC economists, even though mortgage rates were twice or even three times higher in the early 90s, it was actually easier to buy a home then than it is now. And in fact, some say right now, 2024, could be the hardest it's ever been to buy a home in this country. Let's try to understand why. So yes, paying 15% interest on a mortgage in the early 90s, that was killer. But when a house in Toronto only cost around $250,000, and the median household income was about $59,000. That's not really comparable to today. I mean, what is the house price compared to income? Not quite 5X, more like 4X, because that same house in Toronto now costs more than four times as much money, $1.1 million, and household income hasn't even doubled. I mean, the ratios are all out of whack. Back in the 90s, like, sure, the interest rates were really high, right? We're, we're talking about double digit interest rates, uh, but housing prices were a lot lower. Uh, and, you know, regular people, blue collared, white collared, whatever it is, you know, they, they were able to purchase a home. They were able to afford the payment despite the high rates. In many cases, that's no longer the case, especially in certain parts of the country. According to that RBC report, in Toronto, for an average income household, it now costs around 85% of your paycheck to pay for an average priced home. In Vancouver, it's your entire paycheck. And in most other major cities, still pretty high, somewhere around 40 to 50%. Averaged out across the country, that's about 64% of the median household income now required to buy a home in Canada. 46% for a condo, 70% for a single detached house. What this all adds up to, not once in the past four decades has home ownership in Canada been this out of reach. Just look at this massive spike over the past couple of years. That is, of course, during the Bank of Canada's historic rate hiking campaign, and when the percentage of the median income required to own a home shot up from about 40% to over 60%. As you can see, there was a spike back in 1990 as well, when it cost around 56% of the median household income. That was in the middle of a recession, interest rates also shooting up at the time, but it was relatively temporary. By 1991, a year later, it was back down to 46%. Today, we've been hovering around the 60% mark nationally for a full two years. Now, if I Google, how much of my total income should I spend on housing? Let me tell you, it's nowhere near 60%. And I'll just read you the first result that comes up here. No more than 30% to 32% of your gross annual income should go to mortgage expenses, such as principal, interest, property taxes, heating costs, and condo fees. The CMHC, which regulates mortgages in Canada, still considers this a useful benchmark. Others aren't so sure, and many Canadians are now well outside of that range. I mean, when it comes to mortgage lending guidelines, lenders will qualify customers for more than uh, what they actually can afford, unfortunately. Sure, the bank can give you half a million dollar loan, but can you truly afford that? So it's not exactly surprising that most Canadians, 76% who have yet to dive into the market, say it's out of reach. And they're saying, nope, now is not the time to throw my hat into this ring. I feel like a lot of people are kind of losing hope, uh, especially in the major cities like Toronto and Vancouver. They're feeling, hey, wait a second, we followed the rules. We played the game, but we still can't do it. Okay, so it's bleak. You're wondering, is there any relief in sight? Well, maybe a little. The authors of this report are operating on what's now become a pretty universal prediction that the Bank of Canada will begin to lower rates sometime this year and will continue to do so into 2025. And of course, that's a huge part of this equation. Uh, I think there'll, there'll be celebrations on the street. 
<laughs> at this point, you know, it'll be a, uh, our own proverbial Mardi Gras that are happening in our districts to see that borrowing costs declining. If loans become more affordable, then housing becomes more affordable. These economists figure it might drop down next year to around 56% of the median household income, but that's still a lot. And it's partly offset by the fact that while loans get less expensive, the price of the actual houses are expected to get more expensive. The minute that interest rates drop, demand will increase substantially, you know, and not to the same, same capacity whatsoever. Falling rates are a double-edged sword. They help with affordability in the sense that we all pay less interest, but they also entice more people currently on the sidelines to dip a toe into the market, including some of the millions of new Canadians that moved here over the last couple of years, who will all be competing for a very limited supply of homes. We had a, a gentleman list a property within the real estate brokerage in which I'm located a few days ago. He had 78 showings and 38 offers in today's interest rate environment. How does one compete? At this point, most economists agree that not even a severe recession would bring truly balanced prices to Canada's most expensive markets, which is why for politicians and policymakers in this country, it is all hands on deck trying to figure out a solution.